they were basically given um, the chance to learn to read and write, but no higher education. They were put to work as cheap labor. Uh, the children, uh, the, the girls uh, as domestic servants, the boys working as field hands. And it was to create like an, an un, un, permanent underclass. Um, and that's still the effect in an Aboriginal world today. Uh, you know, you asked earlier, well, how is it still going on? Well, I work in an area in Vancouver um, called the downtown east side. It's really, it's one of the poorest areas of Canada. It's uh, over half the people who live there are Aboriginal. And they die at a rate 20 times the national average. Mm. You know, it's not uncommon to see people die in their 30s and 40s from diabetes, from suicide, from violence. All of this, if you if you look at the people who are suffering, all of them went through these, these residential schools. They were terrorized from a young age, um, brutalized. I mean, some of the things going on in there, they even they had electric shock torture chairs they set up. They had sterilization programs where um, the and this has already been the subject of lawsuits, they had hospitals operating on the West Coast where they would sterilize uh, thousands of Native children hmm. as soon as they reached puberty. It was t in order to uh, to exterminate the population, to get Native people off the land and depopulate areas that the whites wanted, especially the areas that were very uh, had a lot of resources. Oh yeah, Tum uh, the, the lumber and the minerals and and, and the fisheries. Um, definitely, they were targeted for that, and so this was all part of a kind of a bigger plan of really ethnic cleansing. And this, uh, you know, as, as we said here, this has been, uh, well, pretty much, I guess, going on since day one, since uh, the European came, uh, came to, you know, over to the American continent, basically, and this has just continued. Uh, and uh, now the connection here between, let's say, the, the residential school system over there in Canada, then, what, is there any kind of clear connection between that and, and what the, the, uh, the United Church is doing? And also, if you can for us, explain a little bit about the United Church. Is that a Catholic, Protestant branch? What is it? It's an incredible story, and you know, you mentioned before here the, the Indian Act of Canada, uh, and as far as I understood it, uh, while well, watching your film, of course, says that the Indians have a legal status of a child or even a mentally ill. Is that correct? That's right. There's uh, the Indian Act. Uh, if you look at the wording, right in the preamble, it says, and this was an act brought in in 1874 and has never changed really. It's still in effect, and it says Indians are legal wards of the state in perpetuity which means until the end of time. And a ward of the state is you can't handle your own affairs. Your, uh, the government acts, appoints a ward to act on your behalf. So uh, 
to you know financial compensation to survivors of these these uh, these death camps really mm-hmm. yeah. called residential schools, and they're only offering ten thousand dollars if you can believe it ten thousand dollars to a survivor is all they get, and um, they have to prove they went to a school. Well, how many people can do that? How do they have access to that paperwork? Most people have been disqualified because they can't prove they went to a school. Mm-hmm. Elsewhere, you know, when the churches are sued for sexual abuse, like in the United States, the survivors are getting one, two million dollars compensation. But in Can- in Canada, a native person is worth one percent of that, and they know they have to take it because there's no way that legally they can say to the government, "No, I'm not going to," because they're wards of the state. Mm. So they're really in a dilemma, and um, it's, it's it's interesting that in I believe that after World War II. The United Nations actually banned uh, race-based legislation, which is why the apartheid regime in South Africa was condemned, because you can't bring in laws aimed at a particular group right. to the exclusion of others, because that's an element of genocide. Yet the Indian Act is still in effect. How is that allowed to happen when you know the United Nations uh, supposedly uh, spoke out, you know, banned that yeah. kind of legislation? Yeah, there, so. there you go. It's a big... Uh hint there in a way, you know, as far as I see it, I, I, I see personally that this is something that expands and kind of permeates in through many countries and that this is a system basically coming from, uh, basically from, from the British, we can try to tie back to the British Isles and one of the things about the origins of this, if we talk about the Indian uh, Indian Act of Canada, of course, uh, you mentioned something in the film called the, the Bago or Bago Commission that is yeah. created by the Vatican back in, I think, 1845, uh, the Gradual Civilization Act. Tell us about that, if you will. Yes. Well, that's why definitely the British played a big role in this. Um, I mean, my relatives are from Ireland, and I've seen the effect of the same policies happening in Ireland and, and the Scottish Highlands, where they you know, were trying to basically wipe out the indigenous culture and, and language. And you know, So it, it certainly was not unique to Canada, but it goes. it's even older than the British Empire. It really originates in... in in um, Christendom, in the whole, in, in the Roman Catholic Church. In Rome, yeah. Um, the Bagot Commission uh, was actually, uh, you know, the, the, the attitudes that are that were there uh, were actually very old. And in fact, you can trace it right back to uh, the uh, a thing called the Romanus Pontifex, which was a law brought in in the 1450s by um, Pope Nicholas, and he basically said in that in that law, a papal bull. Uh, Christian kings have the moral duty and the right to subdue all non-Christian. They call them Saracens and pagans. Mm. Um, in other, and the reason they they had the right to do that is because uh, non-Christian people do not have the right to their own land and their own identity because they're not Christian. And that mm. idea has that law has never been revoked by the Vatican. <laughs> so a series of laws, including the Intercaterrible of 1493, that divided the world between Spain and Portugal, the entire world. Um, and all of those laws are still in the books in the Vatican, and the attitudes behind them are still in place, too. The attitude is, you know, uh, I think the idea has been secularized now into a more kind of corporate capitalist model that anybody outside our system doesn't have the right to remain themselves. They have right. to be absorbed into our system or destroyed. And that that was the attitude behind Christian genocide in the New World, and it's still the attitude, you know, behind uh, imperialism today, that people don't have the right to hold on to themselves. They have to be part of our system or they're, they're, they're a fair game, if you like. So, I mean, that's an old idea. And the, the traditional leaders and, and wiping them out, like often what missionaries would do is literally with the, with the Royal Canadian Mounted Police officers, they would go into the houses of the traditional chiefs and throw them out, evict them. Hmm. Then they would bring in Christian native chiefs and they would replace the traditional chief. Really? And, yeah, I mean, that happened all over the country. And the the families targeted for sterilization were usually the, the traditional chiefs who didn't want to go along with the church and the government. They were literally wiped out. And so a lot of the chiefs today are not actually the original chiefs. They were brought in. They were kind of like the, the collaborating, uh, like you get in any system of, of colonialism. You had yeah. a certain group of people collaborating. And uh, they were the ones who were elevated to positions of, of authority. And they're the ones actually who are running a lot of the native groups in Canada today. So it's it's um, that whole legacy of of, of colonialism that, that we're dealing with. Hmm. My God, it's, it's an incredible story. And, you know, you mentioned before here the, the Indian Act of Canada. Uh, and as far as I understood it, uh, while watching your film, of course, says that the Indians have a legal status of a child or even a mentally ill. Is that correct? 
Protection Act brought in in 1874 and has never changed, really. It's still in effect. And it says Indians are legal wards of the state in perpetuity, which means until um, definitely they were targeted for that. And so this was all part of a kind of a bigger plan of really ethnic cleansing. And this, uh, you know, as, as we said here, this has been, uh, well, pretty much, I guess, going on since day one, since uh, the European came, uh, came to, you know, over to the American continent, basically, and this has just continued. Uh, and uh, now the connection here between, let's say, the, the residential school system over there in Canada, then, what, is there any kind of clear connection between that and, and what the, the, uh, the United Church is doing? And also, if you can for us, explain a little bit about the United Church. Is that a Catholic, Protestant branch? What is it? No, it's the biggest uh, Protestant church in Canada. Uh, these these boarding schools were run by all the main churches. The Roman Catholics ran about two thirds of them, mm -hmm. and then the United Church ran the rest, along with the Anglican Church, the Church of England, and those three churches are responsible for most of the residential schools. Um, the United Church played a big role because it was set up by the government um, as part of their plan to kind of assimilate the immigrant population. Like after World War One, a lot of people were coming from Europe over to Canada, and The, the establishment here was very concerned that they were going to get swamped by all these, you know, foreign populations. And they considered Native people as in the same category as immigrants. They were, they were like a foreign population that had to be controlled. And that was one of the purposes of the United Church, to go into these areas. And uh, what they called mission work was actually uh, identifying the indigenous for a couple of years. They were basically given um, the chance to learn to read and write, but no higher education. They were put to work as cheap labor. Uh, the children, uh, the, the girls uh, as domestic servants, the boys working as field hands. And it was to create like an, an un, un, permanent underclass. Um, and that's still the effect in an Aboriginal world today. Uh, you know, you asked earlier, well, how is it still going on? Well, I work in an area in Vancouver um, called the Downtown East Side. It's really, it's one of the poorest areas of Canada. It's uh, over half the people who live there are Aboriginal. And They die at a rate 20 times the national average. Mm. You know, it's not uncommon to see people die in their 30s and 40s from diabetes, from suicide, from violence. All of this, if you if you look at the people who are suffering, all of them went through these these residential schools. They were terrorized from a young age, um, brutalized. I mean, some of the things going on in there. They even they had electric shock torture chairs. They set up. They had sterilization programs where um, they. And this has already been the subject of lawsuits. They had hospitals operating on the West Coast where they would sterilize uh, thousands of Native children hmm. as soon as they reached puberty. It was to, in order to uh, to exterminate the population, to get Native people off the land and depopulate areas that the whites wanted, especially the areas that were very uh, had a lot of resources. Oh yeah, Tum uh, the, the lumber and the minerals and and, and the fisheries. At the end of time, and the ward of the state is you can't handle your own affairs. You're, uh, the government acts appoints a ward to act on your behalf, so you can't go to court. Uh, you're not considered a legal entity. Uh, you can't open a bank account, uh, and none of that. So under the Indian Act, that's the status of Native people. And, you know, as such, they can treat Native people any way they like. Yeah. Uh, you know, a, a perfect example of that is recently the government's been, because of a lot of the work I've been doing, this uh, information is finally coming out. And so the government was forced to, last year, not only acknowledge the high death rate, but start issuing what they call compensation to, you know, financial compensation to survivors of these these uh, these death camps, really, mm -hmm, yeah. called residential schools. And they're only offering $10,000, if you can believe it. $10,000 to a survivor is all they get. And um, they have to prove they went to a school. Well, how many people can do that? Well, how do they have access to that paperwork? Most people have been disqualified because they can't prove they went to a school. Mm -hmm. Elsewhere, you know, when the churches are sued for sexual abuse, like in the United States, the survivors are getting one, two million dollars compensation. But in, Can in Canada, a native person is worth one percent of that, and they know they have to take it because there's no way that legally they can say to the government, no, I'm not going to because they're wards of the state. Hmm. So they're really in a dilemma, and um, it's, it, it's interesting that in, I believe that after World War II, The United Nations actually banned uh, race-based legislation, which is why the apartheid regime in South Africa was condemned, because you can't bring in laws aimed at a particular group right. to the exclusion of others, because that's an element of genocide. Yet the Indian Act is still in effect. How is that allowed to happen when you know the United Nations uh, supposedly uh, spoke out, you know, banned that yeah. kind of legislation? Yeah, there, there you go. It's a big, uh, 
hint there in a way, you know, as far as I see it, I, I see personally that this is something that expands and kind of permeates in through many countries and that this is a system basically coming from uh, basically from, from uh, the British, we can try to tie back to the British Isles. And one of the things about the origins of this, if we talk about the Indian uh, Indian Act of Canada, of course, uh, you mentioned something in the film called the, the Bago or Bago Commission that is yeah. created by the Vatican back in, I think, 1845, uh, the Gradual Civilization Act. Tell us about that, if you will. 